Hello Hi. there. Hold on, let's get this camera angle right. Right then, welcome and welcome to Genesis Models, our live session. Uh, this is the 21st, sort of like a Christmas special. We're going to be having some cool little giveaways. I've got a whole bunch of Airfix kits um, just here to to give away. Um, to be able to be in it to win it, all you've got to do is tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be giving these kits away live. Um, what I'm going to do, because it's Christmas, I'm just going to say, when I say the word Santa, right, what I want you to do is the first person who comments back to me, Santa, will be the winner, and then I'll get it shipped out to you free of charge. So be ready to type Santa when I say Santa um, live tonight. So getting on with um, the sh um, getting on with tonight. Tonight we've got as usual we've got our um, Wellington just in there. To be totally honest, it's been Christmas, been rather rather busy. I haven't finished the bits that I was doing last week because I've shown you um, all the um um sort of like the pin washes that we was doing and i haven't managed to do the clean up stage yet for it um so we're probably not going to be able to sort of move along with this as much tonight and i'm kind of blagging it a bit to to be fair but there's a few things we can do on this the one other thing was i wanted to show you because um if you remember last week um i did have a bit of a dirty airbrush Add some spluttering going on it wasn't spraying quite right so what I thought is we'll dive in and we'll have a look at cleaning an airbrush there's kind of two ways I clean an, an, an airbrush I'm gonna gonna show you this um, tonight so let's just um, put you back to the desk cam let's get this just right so I'm playing cameraman again Right. So, just getting out of kitchen paper towel, uh, a couple of tools we're going to be needing for this. Oh, and you know, feel free to make any comments in um, the comment section, and I'll do my best to sort of answer them or even show you stuff live uh, and and sort of get you through that. Well, we've got our airbrush just here. Right, doesn't really necessarily matter so much. Uh, most airbrushes are pretty much the same. I do like to use cellulose thinners to clean out my airbrush. This stuff is really, really strong. Um, it really sort of breaks down any sort of dried up paint pretty quick, fast and easy. You don't want to be leaving this sort of sitting in your airbrush because it will sort of you know, erode away um, the actual paintwork that's on the on the airbrush, but we're only cleaning it, so it's not going to be sitting in the airbrush. A um, couple of all um, tools as well. We've got a, a reaver, um, and also there are um, these um, sort of like brushes that you can get for airbrush brushes. Um, I do believe there's there's loads of online shops where they specialise just in airbrushing and stuff. And you can buy these reavers and um, brushes and all that kind of cool stuff. I did buy this really, really tiny one. It's a, um, it's a good idea if you go out and and find this one. This one is so nice and tiny. It really gets into those um, nooks and crannies rather nice. But this little set here as well does all sorts of general stuff, right? So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to show you first um, a quick sort of clean. Right before we do maybe like a big full on, you know, take it apart and everything. The main problem when it comes to an airbrush, let's bring you in maybe a little bit. Um, major problems with the airbrush um, is going to be the nozzle end, right? It's going to be the nozzle, right? So if we take this off inside here we have our nozzle this nice little small piece just here on the iwata uh, which is just here it's even smaller right and there's um, a few of airbrushes that are similar to this right, if i just take this one off right just inside there there's this really tiny tiny um nozzle and you actually need a wrench little wrench 
just to screw that off. But you know, cleaning it is basically the same, but you know, there's just a difference there. Um, so you want so for a quick clean, just to get you back into spraying without stripping it completely apart, I just just clean this part, and you know what, nine times out of ten, you can get um airbrushing again straight away and it should solve all your problems uh nine times out of ten so what i like to do is i've got um a tamia an empty tamia pot just here it's got cellulose thinners in here um i like to just let it dip it in here and let it soak but if you do do that we've got this teflon just here you want to be taking this off because right, that Teflon, if it soaks in with all the um, cellulose thinners, it's going to sort of ruin it. But this is just fine just to drop in there, shake it about, and we'll just leave that for a bit now. Because um, the other potential um, piece as well, that's going to probably give you aggro, right, just for a quick clean, is going to be our needle just here. So... Um, I don't mind sort of like cleaning this for a bit while that just soaks. So kitchen paper towel, All right, like so. Also some cotton, cotton wool buds, gonna be um, a good one for this. Santa. Hey, okay, we've got our first winner tonight is um m reeves who managed to um type in santa so you are the winner of the 172nd scale fuck a wolf and that's by airfix really nice nice kit just here um go to jenny models website um and you'll find contact details there my email address give me an email with your um actual mailing address and i'll ship this out to you free of charge but don't worry there's three more prizes um ready to go uh, to be to go out tonight so get ready to type santa in again uh, i'm just going to check some messages uh, yeah i got a question about uh the um how i masked up the back just here i did actually um i think it was last week or the week before that i did sort of show you um in that one but just to quickly recap we've got stuff here the jammy dog tape right and this stuff is nice thin masking tape which allows you to sort of um, go around these corners rather rather nicely i always start at um maybe i'll just quickly quickly show you just getting a a bit off and get a blade quick cut I always start at the top right like so so I get that pressed down and then I sort of hold with my thumb right right at the top and then I'll just sort of follow it around like so Right, and as you can see, we've got a sort of a nice curve to it there. That's the easy part, really. The hard part is to then repeat that this side, right, but getting it exact um, to say the left side. So it might be a case of just, you know, just pull it up, readjust, pull it up, maybe sort of readjust. There's a bit of a play with it. Right, but you know, once you've played around with it a bit, and you'll eventually sort of, sort of get there. Right, but that's just a, a recap of how I masked that. Good old jammy, jammy dog tape. Um, if you've got no jammy dog tape, you can. Um, as a little tip, we do have um, Italian masking tape, which really is one sort of thing you should really sort of get your hands on. Um, but if you haven't got jammy dog tape, you can just as easily just cut some very sort of fine strips of Tamiya masking tape, right? 
and you know it will do the same job all right just in case you don't have any or you want a particular size or or, or whatever but anyway back to the um the needle all right cellulose thinners all right let's just open this up all right this stuff is quite smelly you might want to you know wear a mask face masks um extractor fan i'll just get a bit on the end of this kitchen paper towel and then i just pull it out like so right i'm not doing this right because we don't want to stab ourselves accidentally i'm just dragging it in the opposite direction of the point and hopefully as you can see that's already coming up clean and we've got paint off on our cloth there so that's all nice and clean pretty sort of easy to do that uh another question here um how do you spray a clear coat so it doesn't fill in your rivet detail um okay i'm assuming what you're trying to say here is um you don't want it to fill in the rivet detail um so is this before you start the stage of um, putting the wash and having the wash go in the recess panel lines and recess rivets I think that's what you're on about um, it, it can be um, a lot down to the kit sometimes I mean some kits their recess panel lines and rivets are quite shallow um, so once you've like sprayed on a primer and and you know you put down your base coats the problem is it can sort of fill in those thin sort of recess panel lines and rivets. Um, or even if you've done a bit of sanding work, that can sort of, the dust can go into the rivets and stuff and fill them in. Um, so the problem is, is the kit could potentially be, as I say, too shallow, which means sadly, um, if you want to sort of do it professionally, it's probably come along and rescribe all the panel lines and rivets to make them a bit bigger so that they can take a wash. Um, or the other thing would be um, getting a toothbrush and after you've done your sanding, just give your recesses a brush and make sure you brush out any sanding dust right and then the other thing is is you might be spraying your paint down too thick if you're spraying it down too thick it's going to build up and build up and it's going to make it hard to take a wash um, um so so that's basically basically it really um so moving along we've now left our nozzle just in here for a bit let's get out some tweezers all right, this is the most important part, I do think, of keeping your airbrush clean. So this is where you really want to take the time. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll just give this a clean, all right, get the outside nice and clean. All right, we'll start off with the reaver. Now the reavers... Um, them okay I mean if you get them inside here we can generally sort of maybe scrape out a bit of gunk right as you can see just there but um, they are designed to not sort of penetrate right through and stab out the end of your nozzle because the end of these nozzles are like zero point well this one's a 0 0.4 mil really really tiny I think they're only made there to brass, so if you kind of stab through too um, too much or too hard, you can split them and it messes them up. You've got to buy a new one. So they kind of design them not to sort of split the end of your nozzle, um, which means you can't sort of clean the end of your nozzle. Um, but we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, we then have our nice small brush here. I like to sort of take this in stages and use the reaver, get out the big solid bits all right, I'm dipping this in cellulose thinners with a brush. And again, the brush is sort of like the same. It's too sort of thick to sort of penetrate right at that nozzle end. All right, but the brush should 
um, get a bit more of the gunk as you can see it's coming out all black right um, but now th this this bit I'm going to show you now is sort of be careful um, it's probably not so recommended if you're a beginner because what I like to do I like to actually use my needle right because it is the perfect size to get to right at the end right in the nozzle right and what you need to what I do and why I say it's probably not a good idea as a a beginner right is is just to sort of poke it through wiggle it around a little bit and just poke the end so that the the needle just comes out right and that just cut that can like push a little bit of the the muck that's right on the tip right which hopefully you can sort of see we had a little bit come out just there but as i say um you can split the end of your nozzle you could maybe sort of catch the needle and sort of Put a nick in that and it can all ruin your, your, your needles and your nozzles and they aren't very cheap so it is um you've got to be either really careful or sort of not do that but it's a little little trick i do use all the time so um you know use that at your own risk so that nozzle is sort of pretty clean now all right i mean i have already sort of cleaned it so it's not mega dirty and it doesn't need a as much as are going over but I like to give it a clean right and then really as for like a quick I want to get sort of spraying and going again we could basically put all this back together and we should be all good for spraying um, but for a deep deep clean right what I'd like to do then is I'd like to just put this nozzle back in here and just let it soak so might be a little bit more muck in there let it soak let it carry on while we kind of clean the rest of our airbrush now we do have uh, let's just maybe bring you in a little bit closer Santa Hey, we got our first winner there. We have Quantum Plastic. You are the winner of a Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1A 172nd scale by Airfix. And by the way, these, these sets do come with some paints and paintbrush and glue. So that is rather, rather cool. Again, Genesis Models website. You'll see my contact details there. Um, give me a bell with your mailing address and i'll ship it out to you free of charge might not be a bad idea to um let me know which kit you actually want so i don't get them all mixed up um but anyway back to it and remember there's two more kits to go so get ready on santa so here we are we've um got our sort of like our end cap just here and there is a little um, rubber o-ring just here it's a good idea to sort of take this off right because although this is actually looking rather clean this this o-ring just here they can get built up with um, quite a bit of um, paint if you sort of spill it out your cup or something so it's a good idea to sort of clean these up and this is where using uh, cotton wool buds which I'm getting low on is a good one to use we can just dip these into the cellulose thinners um, good idea to clean around where the o-ring goes also you know twist and push that in there and clean that out um, I'm not gonna sort of spend ages trying to really actually clean this because as I say my airbrush is pretty clean um, so I'll just kind of move along with just the process of this getting our o-ring give that a clean as well and this is cellulose thinners and this o-ring will um, go really funky and not work anymore right if you leave the cellulose thinners on there so good idea just dry that off with a kitchen paper towel put it one to one side um, <clears throat> Next up, I mean, you know, we could take off our colour cup, right? And we can, again, with a um, cotton wool bud, 
just clean inside here also and you can really get a lot of muck from in here All right there is a, a Teflon inside just here um, Teflons are quite good they're, they're better than no rings they can take stuff like cellulose thinners and not go so funny so quickly um, it, it is kind of recommended maybe once every year um, you can get these sets I think it was from um, um, the spray company .co .uk or um, something that there's a, there's a nice online store anyway and they they do everything airbrushing actually I think that's what they're called everything airbrush .co .uk or something um, and they do these sets where they've got all the Teflons, all the O-rings. And I do recommend once a year you buy that little set and you place all the Teflons and O-rings. And it just makes everything all nice, nice and fresh. I'll just quickly check in any comments. So we clean inside there. We've also got this end. If we clean in here as well, right, with the cotton wool bird. Right, and we can get a bunch of um, gunk out of there also. Um, not such a bad idea to come in with, uh, where's it gone, with our brush. Again, dip it in the cellulose thinners, right? And just down there, there's that little hole where the needle goes, you know, just sort of brush inside there, right? And you could probably get quite a bit of gunk, as you can see, coming from that. So good idea to keep dunking clean brush right and keep going basically till that's clean but as i say i'm not gonna fully do it because um i don't want to keep make this boring too much so with that we can then screw this off this can be a bit of a pain to get back on sometimes all right but we screw this off Take out the trigger guard, right? And then again, coming in with a cotton wool bud soaked in the cellulose thinners. We can clean across the top there. We can come in the back, getting right down there. Right, it shouldn't be that dirty this side. As you can see, I've just dipped that in there. I'm not really, I'm getting a little bit of dirt, but it's not like full on really, really bad. It shouldn't be, because there is little Taflons just in the middle here, which is supposed to stop the paint coming back into all the working parts. All right, so as you can see, not exactly much paint. It's looking a little bit yellow, and that's because I normally oil this end up all right and then here this should be clean in here there shouldn't be any sort of paint or anything if we just screw this off we've got a spring in there should be all um, nice and clean which it is if it's not you want to sort of clean it um, don't forget to sort of clean inside your your color cup as well and clean the threads always good to clean the threads because a build up paint and stop it from like sealing properly All right and then once you've sort of you know spent a bit of time really sort of cleaning all that um it's all pretty much nice and clean now this next part is optional but um i do like to get out a little bit of oil um i use the multi-purpose oil Right, you only want a little bit of this, and as I say, this is optional as well. Right, but I like to get out a nice clean cotton wool bud. Right, maybe just dip a little bit on your cotton wool bud. Right, so yeah, your cotton wool bud's got a nice bit of oil on there. I do like to just on the back end i don't like to do it down this end this end is where the paint's going to be you don't want to be mixing oil with paint but down this end is working parts you shouldn't be getting any paint you just want all the parts to sort of work nice and loosely and freely and not sort of be getting jammed so i do like to get my cotton wool bud in there so it's a little bit of oil just a tiny bit of oil that's going on in there um, also where this spring is, I might get a little bit more oil, 
on the cotton wool bird. It's just kind of a little bit of oil on there. Get the spring back on. You can even sort of go inside here with oop, damn. That's not good. Still got it out. All right, a bit more oil on that end. All right, and then we can basically put this back in here, and it should be, you know, moving quite nicely. All right, screw this on. All right, and then this is sort of like the tricky part is we're going to be putting the trigger in. And you should feel it bounce downwards, but be quite loose going backwards and forwards. All right, and what we need to do is get this little end bit to go through that little hole inside there, as well as trying to screw it. All right, so you might be playing around with it a little bit, but you'll get the hang of it. And then what you should have is it bounces down and it goes back and springs back and all nice and good right um, then we could get out with some tweezers our nozzle just here which is still soaked in cellulose thinners can place that in the front end cap right and then we can start putting back on our taflons and our o-rings It's important that you put these back on because you won't get good pressure and air will start spurting out and you'll get bubbles blowing back in your colour cup. We can screw this back on. Right. Maybe even get the guard on. Get our needle. I like to thread the needle um, through this end. And I, all, I basically always like to thread it through the back end and always pull it out through the front. I don't like to, when I take the needle out, put it out this way because there's potentially paint on the end of the needle. And if you pull it out this way, you could start getting a bit of paint in the working parts area. So I always like to go through the front. And then you just push it through very, very slowly until you just see that needle come through and you feel a tiny bit of resistance because that's where it's just stopped. And then we tighten that up. Don't really sort of push that in because you'll, you'll um, split the end of your nozzle. right? And then just check that when you pull back, the needle goes back and everything is all nicely working. And then you basically just put all the um, sort of bits back on, if I can find them, here we go. Put the back plate on, put our colour cup back on. And put all these lids back on and put them out the way. Right. And then get some air back in here. And then what I like to do is start blasting through um, some airbrush cleaner, right? Not the cellulose thinners, but um, I'll use my own sort of mixture here, which there is a video on that if you go check out Dennis Smodder's website. Um, but if you want to buy your own, um, I do recommend Vallejo um, airbrush cleaner. Because right, we have been cleaning this out with cellulose thinners and we just want to get our airbrushes thinking like water-based type paints rather than all that sort of cellulose thinners. Give it a sort of a gurgle, clean it out of this end. I mean, you shouldn't have to really, it should be all nice and clean, but it's a good habit to keep into. And then just blast through a nice bit of this. And it should be all nice and clean. Santa. And we have Epic Le04 has won the North American uh, P51D Mustang 172nd scale by 
and fix again go to Jenny Models website you'll see my email address there and everything give me an email with your uh, mailing address as well as which kit you want and I'll get it shipped out to you free as charge as soon as possible um, just one more kit left to go tonight I'm just gonna quickly check any if there's any questions and answers okay now we are all good to carry on so let's just have a quick tidy up Maybe we could get back to the um, Wellington. Because uh, as I say, I didn't get it prepped for tonight because I was I was planning on like trying to get a, a mat coat on it and getting it all finished and but I didn't have the time. Um, so as you can see, you know, I've still got um the wash to clean off as i showed you last week but what we can do is a few little more touches uh, what we have here is a nice product by um, ammo this is fuel stains uh, fuel stains engine um, fuel and oil um, i do like this as a nice sort of um tiny 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 little um, little extra that you can add it's just a little bit that I put on it's not very noticeable but you know those close-up photos or when you get any close to model and you see like a bit of oil coming off the engine um, or, or even a bit of landing gear um, is rather good now you've got to give it a good shake gets all the sediment off the bottom there are, um, um, they do do like um, dirty oil and oil stains as well, but I do like the fuel stains, but you can do all three if you want. But a fuel stains is one of my favorite. Right. So just getting out a nice tiny paintbrush. Right, what we're gonna do, um, I mean, this is 172nd scale. This engine isn't massively detailed, and you're probably going to want to come in as close as we can get you for this, I think. Right, um, not massively detailed, so we're not going to see like a brilliant effect here. And I do believe this mostly gets covered up, but on some really nice lows, really nice engines that are really, really detailed, this looks absolutely amazing. Or even on armor as well for like oil spills, also rather, rather cool. It's getting a bit on the end of my brush and basically you can just sort of like touch some little areas. Oh, I've dipped that in way too much. So I'll have to clean my paintbrush. And uh, in some sort of areas we can sort of dip this in. Just sort of kind of paint on like a in a recess or something where maybe it's just pulled up. Right. Trying to get a bit on here. And it is just such a, a little sort of thing. Maybe there's like a little oil or fuel leak just here. maybe you could sort of streak it down a bit cool thing is as well is it will dry to like a a bit of a shiny finish right i don't know how well you can see that on camera but it's just a little bit of an oil stain maybe i could do like a bigger blob just for this live session just so you can see it because i don't know how well you've seen that but Hopefully you can see like a little bit, you know, got all that oil on there. I've gone over the top just for you guys so you can see it, but it will dry to this sort of nice, shiny, oily sort of look. Um, as I say, it is really sort of nice when it comes down to um, um, nice, fancy engines. Um, I could pretend, oh no, I haven't got one actually. I was going I did think I had one I could show you, but I haven't actually not here in the studio. Now, um, clean off your paintbrush. Now, this paintbrush actually is the uh, Series 7 Windsor & Newton. Really, you know, people say they're like the best in the world. I think they're the best I've found out there. 
they are a bit expensive but you want to sort of take care of them, care of them and this is enamel base so it's going to ruin your paintbrush pretty quick if you don't take care of them so i'm just getting most of this excess off of this paintbrush um, and a product i definitely recommend is the masters brush cleaner and preserver um, what it does is it cleans it all right so if we dip in some water and then we can sort of clean our paintbrush in here and at the same time it is also a conditioner so it conditions the brushes it keeps them nice and healthy and and as if you brought them new and they do it does really prolong the life of these brushes right now don't ever sort of as you're cleaning it sort of push down and like bend the bristles back like this and be all like that i kind of come in at a side angle like this so the bristles are sort of pointing um forward most of the time right because if you start bending them back they bend and um they go all funny they lose their shape all right i'm just getting some of this foam rubbing it in again i'm always sort of keeping it straight hopefully as you can see not bending the bristles back just keeping it at an angle all right and then maybe sort of brush it off into some water all right maybe sort of i do like to maybe have a little bit on the end of my finger and sort of have a bit of it sort of left on there because what it does it sort of dries and as it sort of dries it will um sort of lock it in it goes a tiny bit hard but it keeps the point not so much that it goes really hard that the your paintbrush has gone rock solid but it just you know bites it down enough to keep that point which is which is what you want with these paintbrushes is to keep its shape so that was just like a little technique um just there another one as well is um chipping chipping's a a good one to go for i'm just gonna get the paints out i need for it um epic leo4 yeah um you just go to genesismodels.co.uk click on contact us and the email address will be on there okay two colors i like to use for chipping um i do like to use some sort of a silver i've got ruin fang steel just here and i also got german gray which is 052 by model air i like to have a nice sort of gray to go down first um because this is sort of representing a chip that's gone down to the primer and the room fang steel kind of represents the chip going down to the primer um this aircraft i do believe is fabric um so it's not technically going to be realistic but i'm going to do it anyway all right so getting out a bit of foam all right got a bit of foam here i get this from um you, you when you buy sort of aftermarket parts like resin um cockpits and stuff they normally sort of sponge them out keep them and what we do is we just sort of cut them up a bit like so and then i just like to maybe pull one of the corners into a sort of a random general shape just kind of pinch it here and there and you know just get a sort of randomish shape going on there throw the excess in the bin All right then with a palette pour oh Oops, way too much paint there it's because the end come off because it's droid so it might not be a bad idea to clean the end of this paint there we go well right, way too much paint there but that's no biggie just dab a bit of paint on there 
right, and actually get out the kitchen paper towel and just dab it down like so, so it, you, you're not soaking with paint on our brush, our sponge here, but there is a bit on there. So when you sort of dab it, you get like a little bit, right? Then you probably might not notice this that well. It kind of targets certain areas. I mean, we've got the wing bit here. We can just dab a bit, maybe a bit more paint on that. Yeah, maybe get it sort of like dabbing like that. And we, I just sort of like to go along the wing edges because, you know, that's where you get the flow go on to around like engine cowls and stuff. Right, because I mean, you know, that the, the ground crew are probably getting in to, you know, all these compartments here to fix engines and them scratching it and stuff. Right, um, maybe ailerons a little bit, maybe so just some light little general ones, just here and there, maybe even just on the wing bit here, because I mean, you know, crew are potentially getting in and walking along the wing section here and making a bit of a, a mess. Right, and you probably can't see those chips as much, right? But um, it is sort of like the primer sort of thing going on there. Um, now, what we want to do now, right, is do the same process, but with our silver paint. Santa. Yay, here we go. We've got um, Rez Ela or something. Sorry if I've not pronounced your, your name right, but you are the winner of the um, British Airborne Wheelies Jeep 176 scale by Airfix. Um, again, Genesis Models website, um, which is genesismodels.co.uk. Go to the contact section and there you will find um, the email to give me an email and um, uh, what you need to do is basically give me your mailing address so I can ship it out to you free of charge as well as which kit it was you won. Um, and I'll get them out to you as soon as possible. Um, that's all the kits for tonight, but if you still wanna win something, I do have another competition going on, which is um, we, here at Genesis Models we do a competition every single month right um at the moment i'll actually show you the competition is for this book which is by ak interactive and it's the real colors of world war ii um loads of cool references in here and getting your color matches all nice and stuff for world war ii mainly armor in there um, so that's a good competition um, all you've got to do is go to Genesis Models website, we've got a forum, and in the forum there is a competition section, which is going to be like called Genesis Models December 2018 competition, and all you've got to do is make a post in there, absolutely anything you want, just a post, and that post um, makes you be entered in for the competition, and then the first Friday of every month I do go off, and um, I do like a vlog and I will sort of do a random num number generation program, count down the thread. And if your name gets called out, you are the winner. But congratulations to you four who won tonight. So I've just done the same thing with Rune Fang Steel. Right. And I've got that. And I'm going to sort of, again, I'm going to dab this in this pretty much the same areas that I dabbed our grey sort of primer going on. All right. Just dabbing it around the engine cowl. All right. I'm going to sort of maybe give it a, you know, a, quite a bit here because I'm sort of representing right on this corner is where people are like really sort of climbing in. Right, um, again, 
here and there where I did it before. Right. Hopefully you can sort of see. You know, I mean, you don't want it too much in your face. I mean, I can just see this nice and lightly. Um, with chipping, it's one of these things that if you go too far with it, it can ruin a model. Okay, so you know, just be light with it because at the end of the day, I mean, if you go too light, well, that's fine, you can add some more. If you go too far, you've got to try and like rub it off or something, which is the good benefit of having um, putting gloss coats on so much. I mean, I could rub off um, this chipping because we've got a gloss coat, could rub it off with say a cotton wool bud, but uh, yeah, it's better if you were. Um, do too little and too much all right the other thing i do like to do as well i do like to come along with a paintbrush um, and in some places with a nice pointy paintbrush like so starting off with again the gray primer color i like to just put in you know maybe a scratch not like a chip but a scratch all right something that you know actually looks like we've got a big sort of scratch and i just do it in these um, places again i'm sort of targeting the sort of the same areas a little just scratch here and there goes down quite nice but you don't want to be going mad with it again i've just put maybe two or three scratches down there but then come back with rune fang steel again and what we can do here, right, a little bit different is, yes, we can put some scratches and maybe some painted on chips, like as you can see here, right, maybe even use the side of the paintbrush just to really sort of add some biggie, biggie ones there. Don't know how we're really seeing that on camera. And then, I mean, what we could do is I put a little scratch just here. What you could do is just put a really fine line where, right where that bit of primer is. So it kind of looks like it's been scratched and some of it's gone down to the paint, uh, the metal, some of it's gone down to the primer and it just gives you that sort of cool look. Right, and even like we've got panels here. I do like to maybe just on the corners put some you know nice little scratches in there sort of representing the panels been taken off and then I don't know thrown on the floor or something. All right and you know the corners are getting nicked. All right here's a even like, I don't know, some of the primer scratches, sort of maybe get them targeted. Right, and there's sort of like your basic sort of chipping on there. Um, there is a whole bunch more we could um, still do to that, but we are sort of running out of time. All our competition prizes have gone. Um, let's just bring you on face cam here. Oh, well, I'll just check if there's any more questions or answers nope no more so let's just get you on some face time okay oh, there we go so yeah sadly we have come to um, the end of the live session um i know it's um christmas now but i'm st we're still going to be back this friday coming um to to you know carry on with the, the the wellington which i'm hoping to have got all this wash done and um the chipping and whatnot so we will basically be finishing this up um pretty much going to be putting a mat coat on this and totally finishing it um and who knows i mean i might sort of look into what's going to be the next um sort of build that we're going to be doing in these live sessions um just remember for those of you who won genesis models website contact us section give me an email and with your mailing address and which 
competition prize you want and I'll get it shipped out to you free of charge as soon as possible. Um, also, we've got our group build going on. Hold on, let's move, move this camera a bit. We've got our group build going on, which was the diorama group build. That comes to a end in January. So for you guys who are still building, you want to get them in so that you can be judged. Um, for those of you guys who haven't um, entered a group build, you know, we are in the middle of voting for what's going to be the next group build here at Genesis Models. So if you want to get in on that group build, win a trophy, um, you know, if you sort of win, um, that's going to be starting in January, the new one. So if you want to get voting, Genesis Model um, Forum will have um, where you can sort of vote for what's going to be the next group build and get cracking with starting it in January. Uh, but apart from that, I think we are all done. So I'm wishing you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So until next time, my name is Bob Waldron, this is Genesis Models, and I hope you've enjoyed.